Hello and welcome to episode one of the Audio Drama Production Podcast. I'm Matthew of Yap Audio and I'm joined by my partner in crime, Robert. Hello there. And on a weekly basis, we plan to just sit down and have a chat about all aspects of audio drama production. Uh, We want to use our own experiences as well as the experience of speaking to people in the audio drama world and listening to shows and just having a chat about the various stages of what you need to know and what you need to expect and maybe some of the mistakes we've made, of of which there are plenty. Yeah, we've been involved in this now uh, for three years, I would say, and you know, we started off by listening to a few things that caught our interest, heard some good stuff, heard a lot of bad stuff, and we've listened to the people that have that have made the good stuff as well, and that's been the most important thing. So we thought we'd kick off with one of the big subjects here, why start an audio drama in the first place? If you're listening to this, you obviously do take more than a passing interest in audio drama. So we just want to talk about some of the advantages over the other forms of fiction that you could put out there. E-books and uh, novels and, you know, there's all sorts of ways of getting stories out there if you're a creative person. So Robert, what's your thoughts on some of these advantages? I mean, what, what makes audio drama stand out from the rest? Well, I think you've got two uh, two polar opposites in terms of creating uh, content. You've got Hollywood blockbuster at one end. It's full of visuals, full of audio, full of costs. Sometimes these films go into billions. Or there's the most pure and simple way of getting content out, and that is writing a book. And you're writing a novel that's got I don't know, 50,000 words, 500 pages. And I'm not good enough to write a book just yet, and I certainly don't have the budget to make a film. And audio drama somehow just falls in between. You know, it's it's accessible, it's affordable. And uh, that's how I got into it. I mean, for me, and I've said this in the past, that the... The ebooks market is a very big one just now, and it's a great a great thing for writers that you can get set up on Kindle and Amazon or other e-readers, and you can get your books out there. In the past, writers didn't have access to, to publishers, so a lot of books just sat in drawers. Now you could put your fiction out there, but the problem is, I mean, the, the market is just completely saturated. Uh, I follow a lot of writers on Twitter and when you scroll down Twitter there's just a lot of guys saying you know I've got my book check my book out and and there's so much out there and I don't doubt that a lot of it is very very good but on the other hand the audio drama market I mean we came into audio drama because of We're Alive we were listeners to We're Alive and we got involved in production and I've noticed and I've been on the I read the the forum on the We're Alive website and there's a lot of people that have came in to audio drama as a listener and they're frustrated that they can't find any more content <laughs> or they can't find any more good content. And that's not to say there's not good content out there. It's just not that easy to find. Yeah. So when you, if you can make a good audio drama, especially a series, the audience is there waiting on you, whereas you could write a good book and there's no guarantee that you're going to get any audience. you know yourself that I've spent countless times looking for something like We're Alive or Eric Zero, another favourite of ours. And I've tried um, different things and, and it started off well, but then because we've worked very hard to, to get to a certain level and sometimes these other audio dramas don't meet that level for one reason or another, whether it's whether it's the, the writing quality or, I don't know, just silly mistakes they make with the production. And yeah, it's difficult. There's a lot of either poor stuff or average stuff out there. And once you've heard the good stuff, you know, it's, it, you don't want to go back down. I mean, one of the other popular ways of putting fiction out there, and I'm, I'm a, a huge fan of audiobooks. Uh, I've got a lot of time for audiobooks, and I'll, I probably listen to more audiobooks just now than I do audio dramas. Uh, but there's something for me about an audio drama that just puts you there. And an audio an audio book can't quite achieve that, you know, whether it's the, the act. And if it's pulled off, the sound effects, the soundscapes, you really do forget that you're listening to, to a performance sometimes. You just 
get immersed in the whole story world. Yeah, I find with audiobooks, I mean, I, I do like audiobooks, but it's too easy for me as a person to switch off. Uh, I suddenly realise I've not heard the past couple of minutes because something else has caught my attention. Now, I've got a bad attention span. But, yeah, audio drama can really, if it's done right, if the sound is crafted and, you know, you're, you're actually in the shoes of the person that's walking down the echoey hallway wondering what's around the corner and you you can be really gripped. So while I do like audiobooks, they have to be really good to keep me gripped in the same way that audio dramas do. I suppose in the same logic, and we will cover this properly in a later episode, it's easier to, to pull the listener out of the suspension and disbelief if you do something bad in an audio drama. Because Very true. if you've suddenly got a scene outside and, and here's this guy and he's got this big echo in his voice, and suddenly you're, you're, you're just pulled out the whole thing because you think, oh, he's recording in a, a reverby room with not a great mic, and, you know, you're, you're just pulled out of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll obviously cover that as well in, in the production side of things, but, yeah, it's too often something's been spoiled by by it being a real difference, or the overuse of, of sound effects, particularly in fan fiction, you know, they'll they'll there'll be um, a bit of dialogue going on and then a piece of a sound effect plucked from the TV series that it's come from will suddenly be jarred in there to remind you in big bold letters that this is uh, uh, fan fiction from their chosen universe. So um, that's something to avoid, but we'll, we'll no doubt go into that in more detail. Uh, but we were going to talk there about uh, podcasting itself being a growing medium. Yeah, I mean, you you are releasing your audio dramas as podcasts, regardless of how regularly you're doing it. That's the way you're going to get your audio out there, whether it's on SoundCloud or iTunes or Stitcher or any of the other platforms that are available. You're going to podcast your fiction. Well, I've noticed that podcasting obviously has taken off big style in the past, say, five years, and we were keen to get on that. But even now, since then... If you noticed, if you go into, if you try and look up radio drama or audio drama on your iTunes, there's not a huge section. They try and, try and redirect you to TV drama or radio plays, which are basically just dialogue and not a lot of production. So there's still that niche that is waiting to be fully expanded by the likes of us, hopefully. I'm so attracted to podcasting because... I'm very seldom in a position where I can sit down and read a book and you know as, as much as I would like anyway podcasting you can you can listen to them at work driving to work on the bus you don't need your eyes and that takes a lot of things out the equation it means it, it gives it so much more flexibility and I think that's in, in our society we're, we're all getting a bit busier And that's where podcasting has the advantage, and that's why, with audio dramas being podcasts, I think that the future really is quite bright for the whole medium. Yeah, we just need to make sure, as a a group, as a community, that we're delivering the right sort of content, the right sort of quality, to make sure that the the public latch onto it and, and, you know, and uh, feed the the fire, if you like. Otherwise, they're going to say, oh, this is rubbish. If we touch on something that you you said at the start, Robert, about the audio drama, and it's almost like you're creating a lot with very little. You know, with, without the visuals, you could do practically anything. You could set your story in any universe. You could have any sort of character. You could really capture the imagination of the listener. And if you were making amateur movies or, or a TV show or even a film, you would have to have the necessary budget to achieve that. Whereas in audio, you can be as bold as you like when you're at the writing stage. Absolutely, yeah. And the the one thing that always intrigued me when I was younger was that when they make sound effects, for even for TV, if it's a sound effect that, uh, that you don't necessarily see the event happening, they don't replicate the action in order to make the noise. They make a noise that is convincing to the human ear. And that's something that uh, is a, obviously a, an art form which comes into play here when you're building a, an atmosphere that, that convinces the brain or, you know, it's information that goes to the brain and the brain paints its own picture. And uh, quite often it's the, it's the things that you don't even realise you're hearing 
but your brain's making that picture anyway. And when you hear the actors' voices and your imagination conjures up a character and that's much more Im- intimate than a film putting George Clooney in front of you and saying, here's your protagonist. And this is what he looks like. And that's that. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, have you ever listened to the radio and you've, you've listened to one particular presenter say a particular accent if it's a, a national station? Um, and then eventually you might see that person, what they look like, and you think, no, that's not what they look like. They look like this in my head. And it's the same sort of thing. You know, you, do, you don't necessarily picture the beard or the glasses of the hat unless you're told they've got it. You've got a very specific picture in mind. So, yeah, the whole thing can be a very enjoyable, satisfying and rewarding hobby. Um, under no illusions that we're, we're going to make a ton of money at this stage, if ever. But it's something that can... You know, there's, there's a lot of different elements to making it uh, an audio drama. It isn't just sitting, typing away words forever and ever and ever, which I think puts a lot of people off writing a book, is that they, they're put off by the idea of writing 40,000 words, or even five times that and then cutting it down to 40,000 words. It's just, how do you begin? Whereas this, you write the script, it's dialogue with a bit of direction, and then you've got to work on the music, the sound effects, if any of the above. Um... There's a lots of there's lots of different facets to making an audio drama, and it's varied. And someone like me with a short attention span again uh, thrives on that. It's an interesting process working on an audio drama because there's various stages, and it's it's quite a bipolar thing because y- you do certain things. You know, you write the script, and it's when you sit there with the the blank word document at first, it could be a bit intimidating, but you get into the swing of it. You get a good script and that's sort of you're you're on top of the world. You send the script out and then you, you've got a bit of weight on the lines coming back in. And then when the lines do come in, you've suddenly got this mammoth task of putting them all together, sorting them all out. And then you start diving into acquiring sound effects. And again, this is something we'll cover in another episode. But it gets to a point where you do think, are we ever going to get this done? But then once you really start tearing into it and the clock goes really fast and suddenly you've got an episode and there's nothing more satisfying than finishing that episode and having a few listens to it to make sure everything's spot on and then firing it out there and and once you you get feedback on your episodes it really is a very very rewarding thing and it does drive you on to to make more it's very much like a you know a rocket taking off to go to the moon for instance you think you were never going to get to the moon because it's 250,000 miles away or whatever it is something like that but the, 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 the hardest part is getting the entire weight from still to moving up the way. And as it gets faster and faster and the, the rocket itself gets lighter and it's, it's gaining momentum, suddenly you're halfway there and, you know, you're, you're, you're going to get there in no time because you, you've got that momentum. And like anything else, basically, it's, it's getting started that's the hardest bit. So I think we'll wrap it up there for this first episode and next week we're going to be covering recording, location or studio. So be sure to to subscribe to the podcast and and stay tuned and listen to that when it comes out. If you have any subjects that you'd like to be discussed on the podcast, maybe you'd like to email in with some points, maybe you disagree or agree with something we've said and we welcome that, this is only our opinion please get in touch with us at uh, matthew at yapaudio.co.uk or robert at yapaudio.co.uk That's very similar to my email address. Yeah, I copied. Well, thanks for listening, folks, and tune in next week on the Audio Drama Production Podcast. Look forward to having you.